shopping yesterday we got some bolts lots of bolts and I went down to Tulsa chain yesterday and talked to Mike the owner there it's kind of cool Tulsa Oklahoma home of Tulsa chain is uh, also home of lots of these supply houses that have uh, heavy industrial stuff so and if you're looking for chain you go to Tulsa chain they distribute their chain all over the United States through a website but I happen to have them right here locally and I went there to get the chain that we're going to use to chain the bow part onto the boat for towing it and it's also the chain we'll put on our yeah, anchor and our anchor chain is 5 8 inch mooring chain it has a working load of like almost 10,000 pounds Today we're going to start mounting those pipes from the wheel set down there up to hold the pilot house. So I've drilled a hole through the uh, bulwark here, stuck a wire in. That's where my hole is on the outside, just a pilot hole. And then we're going to put a backing plate, kind of like a washer, in on this side. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to have room for it. We can cut up smaller ones or we can cut it down. They call this repurposing, but on the farm we just called it looking around and seeing what you have. Well, dang it, I drilled my holes in the wrong spot, so I gotta drill another one. Kind of trouble you get into when you leave that work for a week and then come back to it. I had marked it, like that would obviously wasn't the mark. got the three vertical stanchions on this side we may put a little cross lacing between them but it really doesn't even matter it's engineered to take all the load on the frame without those but these give us a little bit better edge Two, three. okay three. all the way back here no, it's not going all the way back in okay oh, shit. um yeah you're a little tight on this naked. side yeah get that one little spot when the weight comes onto the trailer Okay. Block. Okay. So there's our situation. I'm going to notch the pipe out so we get in closer. Oh. Oh yeah. Block it. I think what we're going to want to do is come out and around. Okay, so everything's going right in the world. John and I are figuring out how to put pipes up or move it along. And then you get a text from Brandon who test positive for COVID before getting back on his push boat this morning. So he's down for 10 days and I gotta think, okay, that means Chris Pilling, I message him. Betsy, message her. Bev, another friend of mine that's staying here right now, I message her. So it's amazing how this can just screw up everybody's day. So I'm scheduled for testing on what, Tuesday. What is this today? Is this Friday? Mm -hmm. well, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Four days from now, I need 72 hours to incubate. So I'll either be dead or test on Tuesday 
You know, actually, it'd be nice to just say it. You, know, you have, you get a, you get a six month rep, 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 you know, reprieve, don't you? All right. So John has respiratory problems. So he's he and he, we're keeping the social distancing is really opened up now, and he's out of here. So we're not gonna get the pipes finished today. But I thank you anyway, sir. I'll let you know from the other side of the grave what it's yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. What's that new one? Is it's the elbow oh, yeah. one for the 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 tapping the yeah, feet. Yeah, the tapping feet. Yeah. 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 Appreciate your help. Yeah, I wish I could have stayed longer. I wish you could too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, there we go. Well, I'd rather have John here, but that will work. After all that, looks like I'm gonna have to take it down and put a notch in it. Well, I ended up putting a big notch in it, but that didn't worry me too much because that's way out there on the end where it's stiffer. And it's probably gonna bow in the middle if it overstressed anyway, even now. It mainly just served as an object lesson in persistence. So tomorrow, got one more that goes here. Okay, well my place is that way, and we have to come through this intersection. Missing that traffic light shouldn't be a problem, but this one's a problem, because we got around this corner and go to 75 that direction. All right, comes to 19 feet, one and a half inches. Man, I thought it looked a lot lower than that. That's fantastic. And that makes a lot of sense. Those bottom power lines right there are just a little bit above the bottom of it. And there's not supposed to be anything below 18 feet. So we'll be about 17 and a half most. So those over there are even higher up. So we could actually swing wide, go out through the intersection, and right down through the middle. Off into the sunset. Let me take you on a quick tour of the route. More traffic lights down here, but they're obviously above the wires because you can see the wires there on the side. These don't even look that low anymore. And there are some wires that look like they're low, but we'll have sweeps on the boat, which is like plastic pipes that go down from the front. So if we run into a wire, the wire gets scraped up over the front of the boat onto the pipes, and then it slides down. Now this is a railroad crossing. I'm sure that's high enough. But any, if it's not, we can jog over into that lane and cross at a diagonal here, which is what we need to do anyway, because we got to get on this on-ramp onto I-75 North. Yeah, this is all doable. So we're going over a bridge right now that crosses over Lewis. That's where I normally exit to go to my place, like that truck is. And uh, that's the bridge we can't go underneath. So what we're going to do is go up this direction some more like we're going, we're going in the right direction. We're just going to the airport. Shit, I missed it. That bridge back behind me, that's the one we should be on top of. You know, you never drive that way, and why would you ever go now? So I'm in the wrong lane to go that way. I'll go back around. Let's try this again. I never go this way. It's way up in the air. We're not that heavy, but we're wide and tall. So once we're over that, we drop onto this. Yield crease westbound. Never do this. They just never go this way. And we immediately cross over. We're going to exit right. Lo and behold, since that 75 runs at a diagonal, it drops me right back onto Lewis, which is the street that I come to at the end of my street. In other words, this is the one I'm always on. So good old Lewis, we make a nice turn underneath that sign. And I would have never thought of this, but the computers just spit it out and said, oh, here, here's your route. Fantastic. Nice two lanes all the way. And here's the, uh, that from, and from here on, it's just, you know, blindingly simple. Here's my house is down there on the other side of that 16 foot, two inch bridge. So now that we're on the other side of that, we're basically free sailing here. We just gotta go up to the port road, which is that next light up there. And look at this. We don't even have to go to the light. 
because there's a the little diagonal cutoff here that is freaking wide as can be. So we miss that tight intersection. We do 245s instead of a 90. And this is 36th Street or the Port Road. So we just fall in on it. And it's a straight shot right out to the port. We even passed by the home of Midwest Cranes. Here is the real one and only bump on this road. It takes a nice little S curve right here by Vogel Paints. There's a railroad crossing. The line is way up there. And look, that is not going to be an issue. That is a four inch bump right there. That is not going to be a problem. Might defoliate a few trees. Up that hill is the Tulsa International Airport. Down there is the Air and Space Museum. And here is the Tulsa Zoo and Mohawk Park. I ride my bike there. American Airlines maintenance facility is back in there. And there's the Oklahoma Air National Guard. And we got a four lane road through here. That light back there looked low, but, and this one up here does too, but I think it's just because the road's so much wider now. The next obstacle is Highway 169. We're going over the top of it. Oh, I'm sure that's, that's, yeah, that's going to be 18 feet. It just looks low because the road's so stinking wide. But we miss all of that. Yes, Highway 169. There's the gravel quarry over there. Oh, yeah, I just watched that semi come underneath those lights. Those lights are way up there. Yeah, this road was built for the port. This thing's all concrete and smooth as can be. You know, the railroad track, but... Ah, that's smooth too. Total trip distance, just a hair over 16 miles. The Tulsa Port of Catusa. And security's not gonna let me in this time of night, so we just do it U-turn. Okay, I'll be honest. I've done this drive more than once, and I enjoy it every time. Oh yeah. Are crappy, but <laughs> crappy wells will hold this job. Okay, I ain't going nowhere. Here you go. We're putting patches in here to bridge that gap. All right, tack it. Ah, my eyes. Well, that pretty much takes care of it for the back end. The only thing we're discussing is brakes. And yeah, no brakes. Now the house movers don't actually use brakes, so I cut mine away. It's just the easy way of disabling them because I'm thinking, man, we're not gonna use them. But it's kind of freaking the truck drivers out. But the deal is, you really don't have to have them. You have to be able to stop in 40 feet for the speed you're going. So I figure we go 10 miles an hour, we're good. We got one overpass on that Gilcrease entrance that we gotta come down. Yeah, it's getting ready to rain here. And, uh, well, I'm not worried about it. So I'm, uh, we're discussing that on Facebook. If you want to be part of that discussion, uh, then join us on the SV Seeker Facebook group on Facebook. Uh, yeah, it's going to rain. And tomorrow I think we'll start on the front of the boat. I need some more I-beam for that. So I'm kind of looking around for more I-beam. Those cranes have served me well, but I don't really need two of them. And we have a lot of professionals and generally good and polite craftsmen on uh, our Facebook group so you're welcome to ask them questions on your projects and post us pictures of your project inspire us what'd you make today <laughs>